So we finished airway management last week, including nursing responsibilities for caring for patients with an artificial airway. So let's now put the patient on a ventilator. Let's start with one of the items on your exam blueprint is who are going to be intubated or who will be put on a mechanical ventilator or I think I specified indications for mechanical ventilation. <clears throat> so here are a few. So obviously patients who undergo major surgery such as general anesthesia. So therefore, for those types of surgeries, we give the patient succinylcholine, which will paralyze the entire body, including the diaphragm. So we need to intubate them, correct? And put them on a ventilator because they can't breathe. Others are for various reasons wherein they're expending too much energy now. So they are Let's say they've been breathing 40 times a minute for the last hour. Okay, if they lasted that long, because that's tiring, right? So they've been doing uh, accessory muscle breathing, so they won't last long. So we give them rest by intubating and putting them on the bed. <clears throat> and many other reasons. Patients who have respiratory arrest, uh, patients who overdosed on any uh, opioid, for instance, like fentanyl. Okay, so unconscious patients, they're intubated. Today, we only use positive pressure ventilators. Let me just give you a history. You can see these machines in museums. <clears throat> so we've got, uh, these are called the iron lung. Yeah, this was, right. So this was invented and used during the polio epidemic. So polio victims, uh, respiratory polio, that is, uh, were put in these machines, so only the head is out. So the, because this was trying to copy our body's natural negative pressure structure. So we are negative pressure ventilators. The reason why you guys are not expending any energy right now, despite the strong positive pressure of the atmosphere is because you, you we are built as negative pressure ventilators so how we breathe is controlled by the autonomic nervous system so our diaphragm contracts down air is sucked into our lungs passively so we don't have any to exert any effort so that's how we breathe so the machine the negative pressure ventilator or the iron lung copy that same uh, process so when you put in this machine, it creates a vacuum sucking air into your lungs. As you can see, it's not very practical because when you clean the patient, that means we have to interrupt the therapy. We have to open the chamber, clean you up, take the doo-doo out, and then continue. So if you're making doo-doo every 15 minutes, your therapy is interrupted so often so it's not optimal for oxygenation so we scrap this we do will see some more uh, <clears throat> less invasive like this one for instance this is also a negative pressure ventilator so it's now a vest that we put the patient in but still the same very cumbersome and not very effective at all so now comes positive pressure ventilators so instead of sucking air in and creating a vacuum, we're now going to push the breath in into the patient's lungs. Of course, that requires positive pressure because the size of your airway and the, the size of your lungs and your air sacs, your 100 million alveoli, create resistance. So therefore, we need a positive pressure machine in order to blow air into your airway. Of course, these are advanced machines, so they're highly computerized. <clears throat> Uh, and we'll talk about the how they work and what your responsibilities are, all right? So we know the indications already. So here are other indications we discussed two weeks ago. Respiratory failure patients, ARDS patients, COVID pneumonia patients are typically the ones that require the uh, ventilation, right? Or surgery patients as well. Now, we already compared positive versus negative pressure ventilator. So we'll forget about the negative pressure now. We always, uh, we only have 
positive pressure ventilators today. And we'll differentiate between volume and pressure cycle ventilators shortly. Here's another chart for the indications. So I named a few of them. So these, both of these are respiratory failure, correct? PaO2 less than 60, PaCO2 over 50. Okay. Instead of discussing this part here, I'll go straight to the uh, modes. Uh, but before we can go to the mode, let's go to the settings first. So these are common ventilators. We have different brands. <clears throat> these are the heavier ones. Uh, we have smaller profile ventilators now, which work even better than these. These are older models. I'll skip through the, for now, the modes, because the modes will talk about the settings, but then they won't make sense unless you know what the settings are. So let's go to the settings first, which is in a chart. Okay, right here. So the settings. <laughs> so the vent will only give a breath. <clears throat> the vent will not suck out air during exhalation. Exhalation remains a passive event. So the ventilator will just push the air in, and then it will stop pushing the air in, and then the patient is allowed to exhale on their own. All right? So the ventilator has to be told what to do. So we will put the settings in. Doctor will order certain mandatory settings. Number one is the tidal volume. This is the volume of air delivered with each breath. The calculation most hospitals use the patient's weight to calculate the tidal volume. So either six to 10 or some will say uh, six to eight for ARDS because what is the ARDS lump? Is it still compliant? Does it accommodate a lot of air volume? No, so you notice the difference, right? So there's less tidal volume for ARDS patients for reasons already, because why? Because the ARDS lung has fluid. Yeah, it has a lot of water. So can it accommodate normal tidal volume? No, so we have less tidal volume for ARDS patients. So next to the tidal volume, another setting very important for us to know is the frequency. We need to know, well, how many times do you want the ventilator to give a breath every minute? So on some vents, it will say rate or R, or in some vents, it will say frequency or F. Either way, it means the same thing. How many breaths are given every minute? Okay. In order to evaluate response to therapy because these patients are sedated, because how would you feel if you're awake and then you have a tube in your mouth, a long tube that goes all the way to your carina, and then you have no control over your breath. Will that feel comfortable? Are you gonna relax and, oh, okay, I don't have to breathe, okay? The, the vent's doing it for me, I'm chill out. Can you do this like that? No, it's extremely uncomfortable. So we sedate you. So patients are unconscious. So can they tell you, can they? Can there be any subjective data to tell us well, how you're responding to the oxygen, oxygen therapy? No. So we always rely on what? And we will have to draw. Okay, ABG. So ABGs will tell us how is the patient responding? Is the therapy adequate? Is it appropriate? Or do we need to make any changes and what changes are necessary? <laughs> peak inspiratory pressure is another setting. Now, peak inspiratory pressure changes depending, depending on the patient's uh, uh, compliance. Compliance is calculated by change in pressure, <clears throat> no, change in volume over change in pressure. You don't have to know this. I'm just trying to explain. Um, <clears throat> so let's say if me, I'm trying to explain compliance. So if this is, okay, this, this is a sponge, right? Do you agree? If I take out this plastic thing here, this is a sponge, correct? 
So if it's dry like this, like what a lung is supposed to be, is it pliable? Does it is it you know the, the sponge without this part here, just the sponge? Does it does it you know recoil? Yes, right? Because it's air filled. Now if I soak it in glue, it's now wet, right? And then I hang it out to the sun and take it back. Is it still like it was? Is it still compliant? Yeah. It's very stiff, correct? So a stiff lung is a non-compliant lung. A soft lung or a dry lung is a compliant lung, meaning it's able to expand, it's able to recoil, making inhalation and exhalation or ventilation very easy. So here, if the patient's lung is less compliant, how much volume can it accommodate? Less. How much pressure do you need to deliver that small volume into that non-compliant lung? You need more? More pressure. Do you understand? So that means that's what that's what the formula is. Compliance equals change in volume divided by change in pressure. You understand now? So what about a very compliant lung? Like my lung is dry. How much volume can it accommodate? A lot. How much pressure do you require to give that large volume? Exactly. All right. So that's why there will be changes here when we when we put settings on the ventilator. That that's what will affect the decision on how much tidal volume and how much pressure you will use. Does it make sense? So you understand compliance, volume, pressure. All righty. <clears throat> Peak inspiratory pressure is again affected by the lung compliance of your client. So if your patient has a very non-compliant lung, very stiff lung, what do you think is the peak inspiratory pressure? Higher or lower? Okay. You will have a lower threshold of, of peak inspiratory pressure, right? Because it's very wet, it's very stiff. Whereas a very compliant lung will have can allow more, can withstand higher pressures. Okay. I'll skip the mode. Again, the mode are higher in the, uh, earlier in the paragraphs, besides uh, higher than uh, above this chart. Um, I will skip the size settings. It's not really commonly <clears throat> discussed. Let's go to sensitivity. Sensitivity also called the trigger. You can use the terms interchangeably. Now, this is a cue for the ventilator when to give a breath. <clears throat> You'll understand this later when we get to the mode because some vent modes allow the patient to breathe. And that is a cue for the ventilator when to give a breath. Now, the sensitivity or the trigger is usually negative pressure. Why is it negative? <clears throat> because, let's go to this illustration here. What you're looking at here <clears throat> is a pressure graph. The horizontal line is zero pressure. This line here is zero. It's zero, zero pressure. The vertical axis definitely refers to volume, right? This is the volume of air. As the ventilator gives a breath, or you, for instance, so let's say Tamina is taking a breath, you will display the same thing. So you will be a positive deflection indicating increasing volume inside the lung. You follow? Okay. So how many volume of air? So again, this is referring to the tidal volume, how much air is entering to both lungs. So when I take a deep breath, you will go up. However, before the breath, See, if this will make this line here measures pressure. If I am initiating the breath, will the breath start above zero or go negative? It will go negative. So when I do this, what's happening really is the diaphragm contracting, correct? Sucking in air from the atmosphere. So <laughs> if this was a patient breath, it will go negative first. It will go negative then before it goes up. Make sense? Okay, so that's why you can tell on the graph, let's say where you're reviewing the patient's minute ventilation, the, the 
the ventilator will display how many breaths did the patient take, meaning spontaneous breaths. You can tell if it's positive or negative. So every positive reflection here, any breath that starts above zero is a ventilator breath. Anything that is negative are patient breaths. Make sense? All right, you follow so far. So here on the trigger, go back to the trigger. That's why the trigger is always negative because that is again the the ventilator's cue that oh the patient is trying to give a to, to take a breath okay because it senses the negative pressure make sense is there any point at which that would not be like, then that means the patient is not breathing or if they are breathing so let's say the trigger is set at 2 but then the patient is only taking or able to generate they're so weak they're only generating one or less millimeters of mercury negative pressure is the ventilator going to give a breath yeah. no, no it seven. didn't reach the trigger okay for the ventilator it says you're not breathing at all that's not a breath that's like i don't know what that is but that's not a breath all right so if they don't breathe Again, it de depends on the mode. We'll get oh. to the mode later. I'm just trying to explain stuff right now, okay? The settings. You follow? You understand what a trigger is or the sensitivity? Why is it negative again? Okay, so the vent, you have to tell the vent when is the patient supposed to get a breath, okay? So it depends on the trigger. Okay? Again, depending on which mode we're talking about. Ask you to all these things we are doing when we are on the floor, are we supposed to use this setting? Or is okay, this is only for the NCLEX, okay? Oh. Uh, each hospital will have, depending also which unit you're working on, whether you're ICU or in uh, telemetry, because you can see ventilated patients outside ICU, right? So you also see them on uh, step-down units like telemetry or stroke units. You, you see ventilated patients there too. So uh, in long-term care, though, yeah, we have patients there, but they're on trachs, and they're pretty much stable, all right? So this one is just what you need for the NCLEX, all right? So basic understanding of settings and modes, okay? Uh, by the way, we'll only be talking about three modes today, commonly tested on the NCLEX. Any other question? All right, minute volume. This is also called um, minute ventilation. <clears throat> it's simple formula. How do you know how much the patient um, took in every minute, how much volume total? How do you do that? How do you calculate it? Like how much air did I breathe minute by minute? How do you determine breaths, this? Breaths, breaths. Number of breaths times what? The tidal volume, as simple as that. So calculate what is the tidal volume and multiply that by the number of breaths equals minute ventilation. Okay. I'll explain why well, that would uh, matter later. Next setting is the FiO2. How much oxygen percentage do you want to give the patient? Okay, via the ventilator. Right now, Bruna, how much FiO2 are you breathing right now? Everybody in this room, what are we all breathing? What FiO2? 21. 21. Okay. So, okay. So, this is 21%. Everybody's breathing in 21% FiO2. Because it's 21% oxygen, that means what are the rest of the gases? 70% nitrogen and almost 20% um, CO2. Okay. And then some percentage of uh, somebody's fart. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's the gases. Now, if you think about it, so when I take a breath, I'm breathing 21% oxygen. So the 100 million alveoli in my lungs all receive 21%, and then they automatically diffuse into the capillaries, correct? So if 21% diffuses, what happens to the rest of the gases? This is one of the 100 million alveoli I have. It fills with air. Let's say I have 350 tidal volume, which is 21% FiO2. Once the oxygen diffuses into my capillaries, what's left in the alveoli? 
which is nitrogen and some CO2 also diffuses out, right? So oxygen diffuses in, CO2 diffuses out into the alveoli. So what happens to my alveoli? Do they empty completely? They cannot empty completely because, because of the other gases that's in there. So is 21% FiO2 on room air good? It's perfect for us. All right, it's perfect. Now it will change now because on the ventilator, what is the ventilator pushing? Okay, so now we have to control the FiO2 because this is not the atmosphere anymore. Okay, so this air from the ventilator is mixed a mixture of room and oxygen. All right, so it's now artificial. It's not the same room air you and I are breathing. Well, okay, so uh, which brings me to my next point. If you give somebody really high FiO2, let's say it's 100% FiO2, that means each of the 100 million alveoli fill with 100% oxygen. What happens when all of that oxygen diffuses into the capillaries? What will happen to the air sac? It will collapse because there's nothing in it. Do you understand? So is it so is it important to have less FiO2? Yes, it should at least be 21%, but never a hundred percent. In the event that we have to give the patient 100% FiO2, we will, which will bring us to the next setting, which is now the PEEP. Right here. What is PEEP? PEEP is positive and expiratory pressure. What is that? Let's go back to the illustration. You understand zero pressure, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. So this is the start of inhalation, and this is the exhalation, exhalation phase. Okay. So minute by minute, breath by breath. So we inhale, or this is the vent giving the breath, same thing. And then we exhale. The pressure goes where? Zero pressure. So this is end expiratory pressure. It should be zero. However, now you have a patient on a ventilator who has a less than ideal lung, correct? That's why we intubated them in the first place. If you give 100% FiO2, what will happen to the air alveoli again? Collapse. It's going to collapse. Now, to prevent it from happening, we have to add PEEP. PEEP can be 5, 10, 15, or it can be anywhere between, in between. So anywhere between 5 to 15 centimeters of water pressure. Why do we increase it? Why do we not allow the end expiratory pressure to go to zero? It will collapse. So the PEEP, therefore, is it useful? Yes. So instead of, in fact, this can be, this can be used in very non-compliant lungs because if you think about it, when is gas exchange really happening? During inhalation or exhalation? Inhalation. Gas exchange. Inhalation. The diffusion of gases. When is it? It's, it's occurring during inhalation, right? So therefore, gas exchange is only happening during yeah. this part right here. Nothing. There's no gas exchange during exhalation. Oh, no, not yet. <clears throat> If I increase the PEEP, if I add PEEP, if I don't allow the pressure to go to zero, what am I doing to the gas exchange period? Am I keeping it normal or am I extending it? I'm actually extending it, all right? So is this beneficial for sick people with pneumonia, yes. with ARDS? Yes, because they have problems with gas exchange, right? because the lungs are wet or full of exudate in the case of pneumonia. So PEEP is actually beneficial. However, if you increase the PEEP too much, again, usual PEEP is around five, okay, for, for regular patients. 
uh, the more sick the patient, we may have to increase the PEEP. Okay, the more stiff their lungs are, we usually give them higher PEEP because their lungs are collapsing. However, think about it. What's happening during the peak inspiratory period? Right here. At this point right here, this is where the lungs it's both expanded. are expanded, expanded, right? Okay, so this is what's happening. When I take in the breath, I reach this pressure. What's the lungs, the left and right lungs doing to my heart? So for that moment, what's happening to venous return? So therefore, what's the cardiac output like during this moment right here? Lower, lower. It's fine, right? That happens naturally after every breath. It's okay because it's only for a moment. Plus the pressure goes to zero at the end of exhalation. Now your patient is now on a bed which has a minimum five centimeter of water peak. So if they have uh, more than 15 centimeters, does the pressure go to zero? It stays about here, right? So five would be about here, which is fine. However, if it's now here, the pressure is here, that means do the lungs completely empty at the end of exhalation? No. So they do they completely release pressure against the heart? No. No. So what's the effect of PEEP given too high, too long? Is that also, also going to make you acidic by the carbon dioxide? Not no, on cardiac long. output, what's going to happen to the... It's going to drop your patient's cardiac output. You understand? So what is PEEP going to be... So what, what level of PEEP is good? Five, five, five. Five. five to 15 is good. Whenever patients are put on anything higher, what should be your number one monitoring? Cardiac, Cardiac output. Watch blood pressure. Okay. Watch perfusion. Does the PEEP, if it's too high for too long, it's going to drop so your patients so only for... Uh, a few hours, couple hours, okay, for just emergency situations, okay. but never too long because you sacrifice cardiac output. <laughs> Any question on PEEP? Okay, so we have what what settings did we discuss? Tidal volume. Sorry, I have another question. Yeah. Why would they want to put it? What would be a reason why they put it? Again, for patients who have really wet lungs like ARDS, so that would be uh, applied to those patients. Yeah, they'll benefit from high peeps. So we discussed tidal volume. We discussed frequency or rate, FiO2, peak inspiratory pressure, peep, and um, the trigger or sensitivity. Okay, all right. A flow rate is not mentioned here. Uh, flow rate is usually about 40 liters per minute. Flow rate is just depending on the speed, okay? Uh, just like when you're driving a car. So what's what's the city speed limit? 25. 25 miles per hour. So if it's the flow rate is 40 liters per minute, then that's the speed, okay? So how much, how fast is the ventilator blowing the tidal volume into, okay? Because there's a certain speed. So that's why you'll hear different sounds on the vent. So some vents will say, Psh. so that's a certain speed. What about if it's like this? Psh. That's a faster speed. Okay, so that's a higher liters per minute. Make sense? All right. <clears throat> so let's now go to the modes. So we know what's set on the ventilator. Okay, so you have to tell the ventilator what to do. Next, let's look at the modes. <clears throat> a ventilator also has a CPAP and a BiPAP mode on the vent. So you can press a button that turns the, the ventilator into a CPAP machine. You can also turn a button <clears throat> that makes it a BiPAP machine, meaning it ceases to become a ventilator. It's, it's functioning as a CPAP and a BiPAP. The... <clears throat> So the, the process will be the same as a regular CPAP machine, as a regular BiPAP machine, but you're using a ventilator to do it. 
CPAPs. When we say CPAP, the pressure will be the same throughout the ventilatory cycle. So we during inhalation and exhalation, the machine will exert the same pressure, whether the patient is breathing in or exhaling out. All right, same pressure. So let's say it's set at two centimeters of water. So it will continuously exert two centimeters of pressure, blowing two centimeters of pressure against the patient's airway. Yeah, whether the patient's breathing in or breathing out. But because it's on a CPAP mode, is the, is the ventilator delivering any tidal volume? It is not because it is a CPAP. You can't give CPAP on a patient that's not breathing. Does that make sense? You have to be breathing to be put on a CPAP. So therefore, CPAP, BiPAP, are these vent modes or are these weaning modes? Weaning. These is only used for weaning. So when the patient is being weaned, meaning they're still intubated, but you're weaning them, you can use CPAP or BiPAP. All right. So BiPAP is bi-level, meaning the pressure is different. So the example is the IPAP, which is the inspiratory positive airway pressure, is let's say 15 centimeters of water. Whereas your EPAP, which is exhalation positive airway pressure, is five. Okay, so it's higher during inhalation. Makes sense, right? Because you're inhaling higher pressure, but then during exhalation, I would want that pressure to be lower so it's not hard for the patient to exhale. Any questions so far? Okay. Yes, sir. Sleep apnea? Yeah. Yeah. So same thing. This one, though, is on a setting on the vent. Okay. Yeah. So a vent can function as a CPAP, a very expensive CPAP. Okay. Again, CPAP, BiPAP are used here as a weaning mode on a, on a vent. We're only going to discuss and test three, which are the most commonly used. So chances are when you go to your clinical, you'll see patients on AC, you'll see patients on SIMV, and you'll see patients on PSV. All right. Uh, we won't be in ICU, so you won't see APRV. These are the uh, modes used for uh, ARDS patients or other critical care patients. Now, some page, some hospitals, uh, depending on the brand of the ventilator they're using, uh, they're actually customizable, meaning the doctors can create their own mode, which is not in the textbooks. Does that make sense? Okay, so some, some, some ventilators are customizable. You can create your own one. Let's say they're doing a study. Okay, they're trying to study, okay, let's try this mode, and they'll call it something. All right, so they can publish that and say, you know, share that with others. Oh, we found, we did this uh, study over 25,000 patients and these are the results, okay? And then they'll create uh, a new new mode. Does that make sense? Okay, but we're only doing the commonly used modes. What are they again? Assist control, synchronous, <clears throat> asynchronized, intermittent, mandatory, or SIMV, and pressure support ventilation. So let's start. So here is assist control, also called continuous mandatory ventilation. CMV, AC, same thing. In this mode, the work of breathing, <clears throat> meaning uh, work of breathing means who's doing the breathing and how much are they doing. So here, this is shared by the patient and the vent. Uh, to put it into perspective so that you understand worker breathing. So let's say Dan Su is undergoing heart surgery. So that's a major surgery, right? So we'll put her on general anesthesia, right? So besides that, she'll be given a continuous drip of opioids. And then she'll also receive a continuous drip of succinylcholine, which is the neuromuscular blocking agent. So she'll be paralyzed from head to toe, including her diaphragm. So which means we have to intubate her. And the mode use, which is not discussed here because that mode is only used in the OR, is control mode, 
It's the work of breathing is 100% done by the vent. She has no role in it. All she needs to do is lay down there and take it. Okay, because she's paralyzed. <laughs> okay, so she's paralyzed, unconscious, no muscle contraction whatsoever. So the vent will have 100% control. The vent decides when she gets a breath, when she gets to exhale, how much air she's getting, 100%. Okay, work of breathing, 100% vent. No, 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 no. Okay, that's what we call control mode. The reason why you won't see that here in your textbook is, where do you see it only? In the OR. In, the OR, in that scenario. Are we clear? But you understand work of breathing now? Yes. Okay, so here in AC, this is the mode most commonly used for, I'd say, 9 out of 10 patients. All right, because when you're intubated, that means are you good or are you bad? You're doing bad. Okay? You're not in the best condition. That's why we intubated you, put you on a vent. Here in assist control, it's in the name. How it functions is in, in the name. So assisting, meaning it will assist the patient's breath. So therefore, is the patient allowed to breathe yeah. to initiate the breath? Yes, that's why it's, there's an assist component there. There's also a control component that the ventilator maintains. You follow so far? Okay. So the description is here. The ventilator delivers a preset tidal volume or pressure and a preset rate. So what are two things preset under AC mode? Tidal volume tidal and volume. pressure. And what, pressure is, what is tidal volume again? The of air okay, the amount of air going into the lungs and the rate is the number of breaths. Yeah. Again, what are the two things preset? The tidal volume, tidal volume the and rate. the rate. Okay. So let's say the <clears throat> the rate is 12 breaths per minute. That's from the vent. Since this is continuous mandatory, will the vent ever give less than 12? No. no. This computer will give 12 clockwork. Minute by minute, the patient will get 12 breaths per minute. Let's say the tidal volume after 6 to 10 mLs per kilogram went up to, let's say, 400. 400 mL tidal volume. So 400 mL times 12 every minute will be the patient's minute ventilation. Okay? <clears throat> this is under AC. Um, so every how many seconds will the patient receive a breath? Under that setting. So we have 12 frequency and then 400 tidal volume. So every how many seconds will the ventilator deliver a breath? 60 divided by 12. Oh. Okay, so every five seconds, the ventilator will give a breath. So psh, five seconds later, psh, five seconds later, psh. all right? <laughs> okay, so this is what's going to happen. Every five seconds, psh, five seconds, psh, okay? Next statement. However... Read, please. Anybody? Yeah, it's here. However, uh, however, if the patient initiates a breath between the machine's breaths, the ventilator delivers at the preset volume or pressure assisted breath. Okay. So this is now the assisted breath. If the patient is breathing, let's say they take their own breath. This part won't be in the recording. <clears throat> Because this is on the board. So this is zero pressure. Ben gives a breath. Psh. And this is five seconds right here. So before the next ventilator scheduled breath, which is every five seconds, the patient decided to take one on their own. They met the sensitivity. Pressure went two millimeters or whatever the sensitivity setting is. They, they tried, they did this. So the pressure will go negative, right? 
So the, the ventilator senses that drop in pressure. Let's say it met two millimeters of mercury. So what did that statement say? However, so this is what they're talking about. If the patient, if the patient initiates a breath, what will the ventilator do? It will give the preset tidal volume. So the patient will receive 300, uh, 400. It, but you can tell that it was a patient initiated breath. Yes, it was negative. See, this is positive because this came from, this was initiated by the ventilator. The ventilator, psh, does it schedule? Okay. You told me to give it every five seconds. So this one I'm doing. Ventilator does that right here when it's time again. Ventilator will give another breath. But this one was initiated by the patient. The patient breathed, took a breath in between the schedule. But now we get too much breath. We'll get to that. Very good question. So now, the longer this happens, so let's say the patient takes their own same thing, 12 breaths every every minute. So now what's the total breaths per minute now? 24. Okay. Okay, Rashima. <laughs> let's start over. The patient's mode is assist control. It says here in this mode. The ventilator delivers a preset tidal volume or pressure at the preset rate. So if the preset rate is 12 at 400 ml tidal volume, the patient will get 400 ml 12 times every minute. Like clockwork. And because it's exactly 12, so it will be every five seconds. Under this mode, the patient can breathe. Okay? Patient's breathing. Let's say they started oh. adding. <laughs> so the patient took a breath. The patient initiated it. Ventilator saw that. Oh, I see you trying to take a breath. Here you go. The patient will get that preset out of order. However, if the patient initiates a breath between the machine breaths, the ventilator gives them the preset out of order. So but, so, so even if then so, let's say only wants three, uh, can I just get 200? Can she do that? Yeah. No, the ventilator was told to give 400 because you put them on AC. On AC, that's what's going to happen. All right. Yep. So it's possible depending on the timing. So let's say then so initiated the breath right here, very close to the scheduled breath. This is what's going to happen. So let's say they take this breath, not right here, here, very close. Okay, she takes it here. The ventilator saw that, okay, you, I'll give you that. Plus, plus, it's automatic. When it's time for the ventilator, you'll get another one. So it'll, be, it'll come out like this. <laughs> it's going to happen. Okay. So is this, so that's why this mode, is but that's not good because they didn't let out exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So so there can be red stacking in this mode. It's possible to have red stacking. Okay. So when the patient's improving, they stay on this mode. No. 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 How will you know that it's no longer appropriate for the patient? When you see that, the blood Not just that. AB, what what uh, ABG imbalance will be seen? When you have hyperventilation, because this is now more than 20 breaths a minute. So what will be your ABG? Alkalosis. Is it hyperventilation? Hyperventilation is alkalosis. No, you're losing CO2. You're losing CO2. Because you're not taking a full breath out. Look, you're going like... You're not letting all the CO2 out. You're getting more oxygen. <laughs> well, try breathing 24 beats at 24 times a minute. Let's see. All right, hold on, hold on. Then we'll draw a beat. <laughs> you're actually you're actually losing. The higher your respiratory rate, the more CO2 you're losing. You are breathing out. Just because you don't take a long breath. It doesn't even have coming out. Okay.
Yes. Quiet, please. Yes. So they were getting shot. Yeah, but now that they're doing it themselves, they get 24 because they're getting two breaths in that five second. Yeah. So uh, in summary, the patient, the only thing the patient can control is the rate. They can add to it, but they can never breathe less than 12 because the vent was programmed to give 12, regardless of what happens. So at that point, if they were given 12, you would just put them on a No, 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 no. Depending on the patient's condition, okay? Because these things don't happen like you're intubated today and then you'll be better at 6 p.m. No, it's going to be a while because remember, there's an underlying condition why we intubated you. You, were, you have suffered lung injury that takes weeks to, to resolve. You understand? Okay, so these things will take time. But when that time happens, you can see whether the patient is really getting better depending on your ABG. So if the patient's no, having but... now more, more respiratory alkalosis events, that means the patient's taking more breaths. Yeah, so I'm saying now that we see they have respiratory so, alkalosis, no. are we putting them on the CPAP? You mean you take them off? Just take them off all together. Okay, let's go. Let's go to the. <laughs> okay, the doctor said it's not discussed here, which you will not be, you know, uh, expected on the antlex. So here, is this still appropriate? The settings we have, the mode, is it appropriate? No, no, So we make changes. Okay, so the doctor can either drop the respiratory rate a little bit, or maybe change it all together. We'll change it to what? To the next one. We do, but we don't have a patient. Okay, so the next mode under AC is called SIMV. So this is more comfortable. So what's the purpose of this mode? This is now used for weaning patients or patients who are simply getting better or patients on long-term trade who are stable, they'll be on SIMV. So what is this mode doing? It's still a volume mode. So therefore, just like AC, what is preset? The volume. And, okay, same thing. Okay, it has a preset yeah. volume, preset rate. However, in SIMV, the rate is not as high as 12. It's usually 10 or less. Why? Because this patient is obviously breathing more. So we tend to put the preset rate less than normal. Okay? It's not going to be 12, 14. It's going to be like 10. In fact, when the patient's weaning under this mode, we can drop it as low as 2. All right? But be careful though, because if the patient goes bad under this mode and the vent is only going to deliver two breaths. I was going to ask you, does it alarm? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so let's finish. So SIMV. So what sets this apart from AC when there's also a preset tidal volume and a preset preset uh, rate? Here, this is where the difference lies. Remember that breath that the patient Danso was taking here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what, what did the ventilator do when she initiated the breath? It gave, her the, it gave her the preset time volume. What's going to happen here? It's, it's not, not going to give it to you. Okay. So the patient here is left alone. No assistance. Okay. So between ventilator delivered breaths, so in between breaths, the patient then so takes a breath on her own. She's left alone. She's not assisted at all. The vent will just say, oh, you're trying the breath? Go ahead. I'm not going to do anything. Okay. Oh. That's your breath. Go ahead. So she can take 100, 250. She can even get 600. It's her breath. Have at it. Okay. Breathe as much. Yeah. Have as much tidal volume or have as little tidal volume. It's, it's up to you. That's your breath. Okay. I'll deliver what, what I'm set. Okay. When it's time for my breath, I'll, I'll give my preset tidal volume. All right. But that's your breath. You decide. Okay. Understand? That's the main difference. Another uh, comfortable setting here is since it's synchronized, even though the preset, let's say, is eight per minute, if the patient already meets the minimum or more breaths per minute, it will not add them. Meaning these breaths, this preset tidal volume and, and rate is not mandatory under SIMV. Okay? 
meaning yeah because it will because otherwise if the patient's breathing more and more it will not uh yeah it'll just consider yeah okay you you you're breathing yeah yeah i don't need to give it because you're you're breathing more all right yeah but if the patient doesn't of course the the vent will maintain you know the mandatory number of breaths okay so is this more comfortable yes yes but be careful though the patient goes bad under this can they continue on this? No. no, you have to put them back on a seat. Okay, that's why I said most people are started on AC. So AC will meet most patients' needs uh, when they're first intubated. Unless it's ARDS, that's a different story. We have to use a different mode for ARDS. But most patients, you know, you cardiac arrest or you, you OD'd on colase, whatever you OD'd on. <laughs> Why not? You can OD on anything. Okay, last mode. PSV. Okay. PSV, this is pressure support. Uh look, it's not a volume mode, it's pressure support. Are there any pre anything preset here? No. The only thing preset is rate. So there's therefore no preset tile volume, no preset rate. Does this mode give breaths? If there's no preset tile volume, no preset rate, does it give any breath? Uh -uh. So what's the only use for this thing? Weaning only. Yeah. Weaning. So you can use other modes. You can use CPAP, BiPAP. Uh, but this one's an option. Okay, so let's say you have a spontaneously breathing patient, but they're not quite ready yet to be extubated, meaning their, their respiratory uh, pressure is weak. You know, they, they're breathing, but they're weak. You can just give them a little bit of support. Support, no offense. It gives pressure. Pressure to help. Yeah, so that's why it's called pressure support. So it just gives the patient support. It's still, it's a ventilator. So therefore, it detects when the patient is breathing. But instead of giving a breath, it will give pressure support. It helps them. Just adds pressure, which is different. It's not the same as a tile volume. Okay, It just gives extra support for the patient. So obviously this is a purely weaning mode. No other use for this. Johnny? Not as preset here. This is pressure support. So purely preset pressure. No tidal volume, no rate. Any questions? Okay, we'll continue at one o'clock. Thank <laughs> you.